Hey guys, David Franklin here with Cartersville Uncut, sitting with Dr. Mark Fairback, Superintendent of Cartersville City Schools. And uh, Mark, you've been on a wild ride the last couple of years with COVID and all that kind of stuff, man. And yet, everything I hear says, good for the city school system, but making progress and moving forward. Yeah, it, it definitely has been a, a wild ride, I would say. It's hard to believe that I guess March 13th will be two years that we've been dealing with this in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And, uh, you know, I'd say last school year was, was definitely challenging, um, you know, kind of in the, the thick of it all. And I think that we thought we were going to come back to a school year that it was over and, and we realized this summer it wasn't going to be that way. Um, but we learned so much last year. And so this year, you know, we just, you know, took what we learned last year, continue to listen to our stakeholders and, you know, figure out ways to, to, to still offer a great education to our kids uh, and, and to stay open, but do it in a safe way. And so you know, for the most part, uh, it's been a great year. At the beginning of the year, you know, we had, you know, there was a, you know, escalation of, you know, cases just, you know, in the community. And we, we dealt with that and kind of live in that right now, you know, as well. Um, but, you know, working with our kids and working with our families, um, you know, we follow, you know, the guidelines. And if a kid's out, we're working with that kid to, to make it up. I, I will say this, our, our kids have worked really, really hard and our parents have worked really, really hard. And on top of that, our, our teachers and our administrators have worked so hard to try to keep things um, flowing as normal as possible. You know, Mark, it's amazing what you just listed some different groups of teachers, students, parents, community. When, when people work together, it does make a difference, doesn't it? It, it does. And I think that's the, been the biggest thing with this. Like, none of us have the perfect answer. We just don't. Um, but working together and, 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 and just trying to understand what's going on around us, we can, we can come up with a, with a solution that, again, will, will allow us to continue to educate our kids. Uh, because there's nothing like um, working with our kids one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one or in a classroom, you know, in person. And, and that's what we've been really focused on doing. We'll talk about this in another section, but that one-on-one -on -one stuff, <coughs> everything I'm reading says that's, that's huge. But let me, let me just... You were talking about how, how did you make decisions during that time because the information that all of us were getting was so all over the map. So how did Cartersville City just say, okay, here's how we're going to flow and make decisions and lead during this time? Yeah, so what we decided to do was really make everything, make decisions at the most local level possible. So instead of, you know, making uh, something that applies to every kid in every grade across the school system, we, we took everything uh, by school, even down to the grade level. So depending on when you, what the you know, spread looked like or what numbers looked like in a specific school, uh, there may be some days where we ate in the cafeteria, uh, I'm sorry, ate in our classrooms instead of the cafeteria, just trying to minimize, uh, you know, large crowds. Um, you know, there have been times where, uh, you know, okay, a couple classes, you know, did have an outbreak. Well, you know what, it's probably wise for us to, you know, have that class learn from home for a couple days, as, as, uh, let that play out, but we're not going to cancel everybody else in that school or, or, or the rest of the system. And uh, those were early on examples. Um, you know, we haven't had to shut down a class. I can't tell you the last time, you know, we had to do that. That's uh, you know, but again, that was a decision coming into this year. And we really tried to do that last year, too. Let's make decisions at the most local level possible because uh, maybe the high school has something that they're dealing with, but it's not impacting everybody else. So why should not they continue on, you know, as normal? And we have found that that's worked for us, um, you know, and it's allowed us to, to really... Uh, keep a majority of our kids, you know, in school. Which has been huge. It, it has been huge. And, I, and I'll say, I mean, if you look at things, um, yes, last year was challenging. It was. Uh, but, you know, I think of the high school was, I think, the third straight year in AP uh, honor school. They had 59 AP scholars named from last school year. Uh, the primary school was named uh, Title I Distinguished School again, two straight years of being uh, one of the, the, the highest, uh, you know, Title I primary schools or elementary schools in the, uh, in the state. Uh, Niche.com said we were 17 out of 180 best school districts in the state of Georgia uh, this that's past awesome, year. Man. Hey, so, congratulations. Yeah, so you look at those things, and, and that's all coming out of, you know, last year. Your graduation rate was, again, over 90%, uh, and that was a fourth straight year of doing that. And, you know, at Carswell High School, our, we have t kids can take 28 credits in their four years. Uh, but our graduation requirements, they have to have 24 to graduate. So there's not a lot of wiggle room there. Um, you know, high expectations are there, and... Again, for, you know, we didn't know what to expect, but, you know, again, another year of over 90%. So I, I share those things with you just to, to talk about, like, last year was tough. This year is, you know, it's, it, it's been challenging as well, but it's not stopping us from doing what we're called to do. And, and good for you, because I think that's one of the things that is huge, is, okay, 
not be stopped. And, and that's a, just a pat on the back to you, your administration, your leadership, everybody to say, you know what? We're, we're supposed to be helping kids learn yeah. and to figure it out. So let's see, we're gonna take a break and uh, Mark, when we come back, I wanna ask you the impact, uh, just how's this been on you personally, the teachers, but the students, what have you seen with them? So we'll be, we'll be right back. Hey guys, David Franklin, Cartersville Uncut, back here with Dr. Mark Fierbach, head of Cartersville City School System. You're the superintendent, Mark. We were just talking about what a crazy year. But, but I want to kind of just ask you some of the, the following things. What's been the impact on students that you've seen? Because I see all these national statistics and all these things are increasing. Is that, but what, what have you seen? What have you seen here? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, everybody's been impacted by this in yeah. some way, shape, form, or fashion. It just is. And you hear a lot of people talk about, you know, mental health and things of that nature. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of truth to that. Um, I would argue that some of that existed even before the, the pandemic, and I won't go on uh, my, my uh, soapbox about social media and, and kids and how I feel that that stuff is, we as a country need to take, take care of that too, because to me that's playing a major role in kids' lives as well. Um, but, you know, you got to think about when we went March 13th, 2020, uh, we went home, you know, and then we came back. Some kids didn't come back, uh, you know, so I, I think, you know, some kids, if they went virtual and then they came back this year, it was almost a year and a half. They hadn't uh, gone to a cafeteria. They hadn't changed classes. They hadn't maybe been around their peer groups a lot. And that can play a lot on, on, on people. That, that plays a lot on adults. Like, it's just kind of getting back into the swing of things. And you know so, what, you're, you're right. And most of our adults have not recognized that it's affected them worse than they realize. It, it's, more. it really has. And that's what I, I've encouraged people to really just sit and how has this impacted you um, in, in some way, shape, form, or fashion? And, and I, when I say that, I don't, I don't mean maybe anything negative. We've all learned something from it. And so, you know, I, I think as a system, we really have uh, tried to make sure that we're providing any support needed. Uh, this year, you know, specifically, uh, we, we put in um, some more positions this year. We call it our wrap team. But every school, uh, we've always had counselors at our school. Uh, but uh, we increase counselors at our schools. Uh, there's a social worker at, at every one of our schools that is assigned to every one of our schools. Um, we have a family advocate, you know, a family advocate or a family engagement specialist at every one of our schools. Uh, we have a student support specialist at every one of our schools. Uh, and these, these folks make up what we call a wrap team. And this wrap team, basically in essence wraps around someone who who needs that support it, it might be something of, of grades grades might be an issue it, it might maybe it's a poverty issue uh, maybe it is a, a mental health type issue whatever it may, may, may be uh, when there's a child uh, and or a family in need uh, this group wraps around and they're, they're meeting uh, weekly bi-weekly you know talking about okay who, who who are we serving how are we best serving these kids and so that's been, you know, kind of our approach uh, to this, understanding and recognizing that some kids may have greater needs than others, and we're just doing everything we can to wrap ourselves around them and uh, helping them uh, take one step forward at a time. That's a great way to do it. The truth is we need to think like that as a community, check on our neighbors because everybody's in a different place. Or what, what about the teachers? I mean, man, what a, I've been teaching all these ways the same way, and all of a sudden this disruption. So what have you seen? Teachers do. Uh, they're, they're the unsung heroes. I, 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 over the past couple of years, there have been times where you, you literally sit in your office at the end of a day and you just, you're amazed at, at what they've done. And I don't think people really realize all they've done. Um, you know, from, yes, like you said, I'm teaching in person. I'm trying to do a little bit online. Uh, to, you know, one thing you have to think about is if you have 25 kids in a class and you know, a few are out, they're sick, and then you got another handful are out because of quarantine. You got half your class here, half your class there, and trying to keep up with all that, David, it's hard. And oh, our, I, I can't imagine. I've watched teachers do that, and I was like, wow, that's hard. It, it is, and, and we've tried to, you know, we gave a uh, 3% gift early on this year to, to all our folks, and uh, last year, you know, uh, did a couple one-time kind of gifts. It just anything, anything little we can do to just say thank you. I don't know if there's enough thank yous in the world to thank um, teachers for what they've done the past couple of years, uh, but to, to see how they have risen to, or, you know, to the occasion and just done a phenomenal job, uh, it, it's humbling. It, it is, and I appreciate you and the board and everybody trying to say, hey, how can we encourage people? And just a, a pat on the back goes a long way. 
But listen, you, you've been a superintendent. I, I've told a number of people, because I work with a bunch of preachers, pastors, like, guys, you think it's hard pastoring a church? What, what about being a superintendent? I cannot imagine being a superintendent walking through something. There's no playbook. Yeah. So how have you held up, man? Yeah, there, there, there isn't a playbook. Um, I, you know, it's, I've held up, but I think I've held up because I have great people around me. Um, I, I would be lying if I sat here and, and told you, oh, it's been easy and it's just been like anything else. Um, but, but truth of the matter is, I think, you know, we're here today and doing the things we're doing because of the people around us. And we talked about our teachers. We have strong administrators. I have uh, amazing school board um, who professionally, you know, we all collectively work together to figure this out. Um, I cannot thank my my wife and children um, for the patience that they they have for their dad um, that sometimes requires me to to be gone you know a lot but they just yeah. they the love and support they provided is amazing I got a lot of people pray for me um, and they do and, and, and we need it because there's really no, tried to encourage that uh, yeah. man <laughs> and we and, and we know it and we appreciate it uh, because like you said there is no playbook um, and sometimes people want a playbook they want a black and white answer um, but reality is, uh, it, there's, it's gray, and it's our job to figure out what's, what's black and white and do the best we can with the circumstances that, that surround us. And, and everybody's different. Or if you hadn't mentioned your wife and your kids, y'all, I know his wife and kids, he's got great kids, great wife. He is a good dad, and that's one of the things I appreciate the most about you is, you know, if a guy's not going to do it at home, he can't lead here like he needs to. So good for you. Listen, we're going to come back, and I'm going to ask you, what's on the horizon? Yeah. Because we... If all we do is look backwards or look down and moan all the time, you got to look forward. So we'll be right back. Hey, David Franklin here, back with uh, Dr. Mark Fierbach, superintendent of Cartersville City Schools. Mark, we've talked about what a crazy thing that just you've had to walk through the school, all the kids, everybody. But man, there were some celebration points because you know graduation rate and stuff like that, and uh, you know everybody ought to be patted on the back in the whole school system, kids, everybody teachers because when you hear the fact that things are moving forward still that's good so man just a shout out to y'all yeah thank you you know i tell people all the time we, you got to take a step forward every day uh, we, just, we can't walk backwards and, and that's what we're focused on uh, you know two years ago maybe two and a half years ago we, we began a process of talking with our community and, and better understanding what are their hopes and dreams for our for the students of our school system for for this community and uh you know through all that we, we really landed on you know, the importance of, of legacy. You know, people really care about today, but what they really hope is that, you know, years down the road, because of your children's experience in the school system, their child is now leaving a legacy. And so, uh, you know, we came up with uh, new values, um, you know, new mission, new vision, uh, where we're building legacies one student at a time. And that has really, we, 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 we did not let COVID stop that process, and we rolled it out at the beginning of this year. And I'm just gonna be very honest, I couldn't think of a better year to roll it out. Mm, that's um, good. Because, you know, it's not that we are changing things or because it's not necessarily new, but it's a renewal of, of, of who we are. And uh, I, I felt it was very important to do that going into to this year. Uh, lots of things going on. We talked about the achievements earlier. Um, I think about building, you know, we, we we're building people, but we're also, we have to build to, to continue to grow. So uh, we're right now in the middle of phase two at, at the Carsville High School, building a, a three-story STEM building that will have, house new math classes. Wait, 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 tell everybody what STEM is. Okay. Yeah, so science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, science, technology, engineering, and math. Remember that because that's a big thing. It that's is a, a huge big, thing. It is a big thing. And so, you know, we will have all new math classrooms, uh, new science, you know, labs, new state-of-the-art labs building a new engineering lab there. Um, we also will have JROTC, we're gonna put in the first floor as well, a brand new JROTC wing uh, with an indoor rifle range. Um, it's gonna be there. We had to tear down. I might wanna come back to You can come back. You hey, can listen, come I back. actually shot on my high school's rifle team. Okay, yeah. So well, I, I listen, I'm there, man. Come on, come on. A new computer science lab. Uh, we, we put computer science in the high school this year. So excited about that. About a week ago, we broke ground on our new primary school that we're building, uh, which will be a, a pre-K to three school. Uh, we're on a kind of a school within a school design. Pre-K and kindergarten are early learning or early learners on one side, uh, and then in the middle of that that, that campus will have a, a shared cafeteria, media center, gymnasium, and then first, second, and third grade on the other side. And our current elementary school will become an upper elementary school, fourth and fifth grade. So lots of, of things. That's and a lot of stuff, man. Yeah, there's that a lot a going on list. right now. And, and I just appreciate Mark. Y'all hadn't let COVID stop you. 
Because I've seen so many people that have just stopped dead. And across the state, I hear people coming up to me all the time saying, man, I hear y'all are doing way better in Cartersville and Bartow County. When it comes to education, people are jealous because of, and I tell them, I say, look, it's leadership. And I just appreciate the fact you've been leading here, but you also do it out in the community. And uh, your accessibility and just presence has just been a really, really, just a positive man. And so good for you. Well, I, I appreciate it. It's a, it's a great place to lead. It's a great place to live. Uh, again, I couldn't be more thankful for our, our teachers, our administrators, and our amazing school board, and our great kids. The community is wonderful. And, it, and when you have things like that, you have a community like ours, it makes uh, leading uh, a lot of fun. Uh, and uh, just, just enjoying it, regardless of the circumstance, circumstances going on around us, uh, we're just going to continue to move forward. And guys, uh, I'm going to ask you, everybody needs to know something strange about somebody. Born and raised where? Uh, Coral Springs, Florida, uh, which is about 15 to 20 minutes inland of Fort Lauderdale and just a little bit north of, of Miami. Most of my family, my, my grandmother, uh, aunts and uncles still live down in Miami, Coral Gables area, so. And listen, we're glad, we're glad that you're up here. Uh, I'm glad too. I enjoy going to spring break for a week to visit, but it's always good to come back home. And Mark, you know, one of the things you said something about the uniqueness of this community and the school and all that kind of stuff. For those of us who have moved around a lot, I think the people that were born and raised here don't understand this is a different place because I've lived in three states and all that kind of stuff. And there's some uniqueness here that's really, really special. We get that when we, with our new hires who've worked in other systems after about, uh, I'd say a week, but especially at least a month of being here. Uh, that's what we hear. It's this, this place is different and uh, it really is. It's it something is. special and uh, so glad to be part of it. And listen guys, one of the things that you can do is, uh, Mark, you mentioned it. Guys, we encourage every time I get a chance, pray for our school system, our kids. I mean, we really believe that that does make a difference. So you keep praying and uh, when you see a teacher, see somebody, a bus driver, thank them. Because y'all, we don't do that enough. So take the opportunity just to uh, be a blessing to someone who's been a blessing to you. So listen, Mark, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And thank, uh, you. thank you for your leadership. And guys, I'll, I'll interview him again, and I may ask him something crazy about what was it like growing up in Florida. So anyway, <laughs> thank you for joining Cardsville Uncut.